Hi everyone, your chess puzzle here, and welcome to the channel. This 2020 Magnus Mutational is probably going to lead to the same as we saw earlier. Will it be a surprise if Magnus meets Firuja in the finals? Today we have a very interesting game. I don't know why I say this, I always say this, but isn't every game interesting? Today's Magnus, who's up against Napa. Boy, is his opening. We don't get to see. So, this is a game of round 6a.1. And Magnus with white goes for an e for opening. Nepal responded with the bold Sicilian. Knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes. Knight f6, Magnus. He deviates from the main line and gets his bishop move going. It drops the pawn on e4. So why go for this bishop move and leave this guy on e4 hanging? I guess the person who's behind all this is Ginsburg. In short, this is a Ginsburg gambit. So let's see what it does. Never accepted the gambit and Magnus goes for it. The idea is to get the knight to move out of f6. And now that he's gone, Magnus tries mating one. e6, Magnus, believe it or not, went for it again. His opening has all the elements of the Vienna. And with Magnus having played this type of opening sometimes, he knows exactly what he wants to do. Takes here with the knight. Let's see the knight's recapture. This bishop was arrested, and Magnus uses the pin he holds and also threatens that checkmate in one. Queen in doing two things. This bishop normally flees, but try and save him, and you will drop the queen. Bishop c4, for example, gets you in with this atrocity, and this is how easy he dropped the queen. Getting the bishop back off to g4 will also change nothing. In with the discovered check, and there goes the queen again. The only way to get something is to castle. Remove the bishop, and once the knight is pinned, d5. Knight c3, and white gains the knight. He's still in the right mess though. Now let's come back to see how Magnus played it. He did the unthinkable. He removed the pawn with a check. And once the queen eliminated him, Magnus retreats the queen and also threatens the knight. The best way to save the knight is to summon in the queen. A move Nepal went for. Magnus castled. And in the wake of rookie one, Nepal wastes no time and backs off this knight. The queen's been exposed. If white comes in with this check, all you need is this blockade, and black has it all covered. Another way you have to go for is to try and take advantage of the queen, being the same file as a king. Queen d1 to try and trick black. will get the queen to step aside, and again, this will not work. When the knight reached here to expose the big ladies, Magnus could not allow the queens to come off. So what he did was to bring out this bishop. Knight c6, knight c3, it makes perfect sense for black to castle. This is however how Napo played it. Queen f3 is a deviation and something that aims to trap black. The hidden move is to get this bishop to move out and then pin the queen. Nepo took no chance. Well, let me say this better. Nepo took zero chance. He finally castled. Magnus right now is a full pawn up, but also a full bishop down. His position doesn't look particularly rosy, but how many times is Magnus able to find a way to equalize? He could have applied this pin But the next problem to consider is something like d4. 
There is a way out. And this is how Magnus plays it. It stops default. Go for this. And the answer is not bishop takes, but this discovery. Removing d4 is a horrible idea. Because once the knight takes, the queen on f3 needs immediate attention. In with a check, queen into block, and white goes nowhere, even if the queens disappear. So after queen d7, Magnus maneuvers the knight into this outpost. And all the attention has now switched from east to west, where the king is located. Mind you, it's again a game with kings castling on opposite sides. Plenty of smoke and devil plenty of fire. Is there something on a7? Whether yes or no, Neville took no chance. He chased after this knight, and funny enough, Magnus doesn't touch the knight but went for this extremely daring response. Similar situation took place when Magnus had the black pieces and played the Scandi against Firuja. What happens if you rest the knight? After white takes, get the knight to back off. Basically, nothing happens. Rook to the edge, and once black activates his bishop, I don't think white can make any more noise. Napo, just like Magnus did in his game against Firuja, did not touch the knight. Napo came in with this attack to try and force off the queens, and Magnus goes for it. He trades off the queens, and with the bishop being now under threat, Magnus attacks the rook. Blunder or brilliancy? It's a blunder, or it appears to be a blunder. First of all, the knight disappeared. If you grab the rook, Black gains two minor pieces for the rook. After this taking on b5. Get the rook to safety. And he would have blown it big time. In with a check. Knight back to block. In with his follow up check. Rook back and yikes. <laughs> this is how white checkmates. And let's hear it. So coming back. His first priority was to not get checkmated. He backed off the knight. When the rook was arrested, Nepo didn't mind handing over material. He has more than enough pieces to manage. And Nepo gets exactly what he wants. Two pieces for the rook and a dream position. Magnus here went on to attack the knight. Knight back to safety. And this is how Magnus is trying to mount their pressure. King into block led to this rook to make some noise, but how far does a move like this get you? The idea is to slip in a check on b6. Once Nepo executed this bishop move to stop everything, any ideas how Magnus reacted? He still went for this check. Can you see any reason why this pawn can't be removed? This is exactly what Nepo did. Rook it with a check, and if black blunders, He's still able to run home. Anyway, here's what Nepo did. This is the move he chose. It's a blunder. What was wrong with this blockade? Allowing the rooks to get together on the seventh is exactly what Magnus needed and wanted. Rook takes, and now knight into cover, and Magnus here grabs another pawn. If he finds a way to push these pawns, without the rooks being compromised, he might have something. However, <laughs> it's funny that I say this, the game ends with Nepo's follow-up response. This is how he played it, and tricks Magnus in his own game. With the rook being trapped, Magnus simply resigned. It's a devastating blow at the start of the day, but Magnus getting hit, with a defeat only makes him wanted to return with a vengeance. Will he be able to do this? Whether he does, for now Nepal jumps in the lead. More to come from you guys, and before I leave you for today, this is one variation of the Ginsberg we haven't seen for donkey's years, and this is the main reason for me wanting to bring out this game to you. Your chess puzzler here, and whatever you do guys, Stay extra careful 
and extra safe. 